Hey everybody, welcome to JLB Sports TV. I am Justin Block, and you may have noticed a couple of things. One, I'm back at home. I only make videos when I'm home from NYU. I do not make them at NYU. And two, um, I guess the most obvious thing is my hair. Um, I had it dyed. It was originally blonde, but it's sort of given way to a sort of ginger brown, I don't even know, um, over the past couple of weeks. But I did it because a couple of weeks ago, the Packers lost to the Giants in the NFL playoffs. And part of a bet I made was if the Packers lose, I have to dye my hair. They lost, the Giants went on to win the Super Bowl, I dyed my hair, and I've been very sad. On the bright side, I kind of look like Keisuke Honda, the soccer player, um, the Japanese soccer player that plays for CSK Moscow. But with Liverpool in the Carling Cup final tomorrow, we have a lot to cover. So instead of this just being a preview video for the final, I'm just going to go over a couple points that I've noticed with Liverpool in the team over the past couple weeks since I've made a video. Number one, it seems that Kenny has yet to settle in on a really um, sort of significant, cohesive squad. I know he's a big firm believer in squad rotation, and I am too. It's With squad rotation, it's really important to rest players and you know, rotate players in and out so you don't have injuries throughout the season and you can sustain an EPL season along with um, a couple of domestic cups. But there's still many uh, selection dilemmas that I would really prefer not to see at this point in the season. We're over halfway point in the season and I cannot pinpoint Liverpool starting 11. To me, that's problematic. It'd be nice to be able to just say, These are the start this is the starting 11 I'm gonna throw out if we had a cup final tomorrow. Lo and behold, we do. And I don't think anybody except Kenny, I don't even know if Kenny knows, what players Liverpool are going to throw out there tomorrow. Our back four is finally settled, but in midfield and especially at striker, nobody knows who Kenny's going to throw out there. In previous weeks, we've had midfield partnerships of Charlie Adams, Steven Gerrard, of Gerrard, and uh, Jay Spearing, of Jay Spearing and um, Adam. And then we've also had uh, Downey out on the left, Maxi out on the left, Bellamy out on the left, Henderson on the right, Cowder on the right, Cowder at striker. Uh, Suarez uh, sort of in the hole, Carroll at striker, Carroll playing as a lone striker, Bellamy at striker. We've had so many combinations, and to be honest with you, none of them have worked consistently enough uh, for Kenny Daglish or for me. But I will tell you some things that I've noticed. I've noticed that the Gerard adam partnership cannot, cannot work at all. Um, that leaves Liverpool without much defensive cover. It makes Gerrard play deeper, back, deeper in midfield, and as we all know, Gerrard uh, is way more effective when he's out and attacking, when he's getting up on the right side and swinging in crosses and making things happen. You don't want him at midfield. Um, that's where Charlie Adam is. You don't want to install Gerrard there to sort of provide defensive cover because Charlie Adam can't tackle for his life. You also have Jordan Henderson on the, on the right, but when Kenny uses 4-3-3, he sort of plays a more advanced role while Gerrard plays further back. Um, I like to see that switched. I think Henderson can play as a decent holding midfielder, or not as a holding midfielder, but somebody who can provide enough cover while Gerrard goes forward. Um, but then again, that limits Henderson's best qualities, and we all know he's best going forward. I personally think he hasn't had the chances this season to really display the kind of attacking, passing qualities um, that we saw with Sunderland last season. We've also seen Stuart Downing in and out of the side, but I will get to that later in the video. For me, I'd personally like to see a diamond or a 4 one 2 one 2 I'd like to see um, the same back four, then have Jay Sperry in defensive midfield, Henderson on the right, down the end of the left, Gerard playing an attacking center midfield role, and we have Carroll and Suarez out up front. I think that's uh, the way you get Liverpool's best players on the field, and then you have Bellamy coming off the bench. That's what I want to see. Um, it'd be nice to see Kenny sort of settle into a squad um, that he can really count on in a cup final in an important game. Because like I said, I do believe in squad rotation, but every single game it should be a um, sort of a guessing match to see you know, which three or four players are in and out of Liverpool squad. Now with squad rotation, you should have the same consistent 11, save maybe one, maybe two players in and out to save, um, just to save them for the rest of the season. The other big talking point I wanted to get to was the famous uh, Evra Suarez handshake or lack thereof. Now personally, I would have just shaken Evra's hand and gotten over it and not made a bigger deal out of it than it already had to be. Um, but I do see where Suarez is coming from. Basically, Suarez was thinking, I was incriminated by another man when I should not have been. I will not shake his hand. Um, it, sort of put yourself in those shoes. Would you have done it? Would you have not? Um, I can s definitely say for sure that many of you would have and many of you would not have. Um, but I think the issue goes beyond that. I think they should do what John Barnes suggested, which is just do away with the pregame handshake. It's meaningless. It's a point of ceremony, a point of tradition, but frankly, it's stupid and it just leads to incidents like this. If you look at an American sports, there is no pregame handshake at all. I mean, there's sort of the glove touch in boxing, but that's just boxing. If you go to the NFL, there's no pregame handshake. After the game, players can sort of seek each other out on the field and congratulate each other. Um, in baseball, there is no pregame handshake. Actually, the only handshake that occurs on the field in baseball is after the game, and that's only when the winning team takes the field and shakes each other's hands for winning the game. The same thing within basketball. Um, nobody shakes the hands before the game and after the game. I don't even think players line up to shake hands. I know in college basketball, the teams and you know player uh, coaches do that, but that's college sports. At a professional level in American sports, I cannot think of a single one where the players shake hands 
uh, after the game or before the game. So moving on from that, I wanted to address Stuart Downing. Um, he's been in and out of the side a lot recently, and I've been a fervent defender of Downing all season, and I think rightly so, but I will admit the past couple of games, he's just been piss poor. But on the whole, I would like to provide um, a defense for Stuart Downing. Now, people say, oh, his crosses suck. Um, he's not creating chances like he did at Aston Villa. What's wrong with him? Um, anybody could have made that pass. Well, the, the point is, if you look at his stats, his stats, not you know what you see with your eyes because that's subjective and everybody has their own interpretation of what they see. If you just look at his stats, he's creating the same amount of chances he did at Villa last season that he did with Liverpool this season. Um, he's creating a chance per 43 minutes this season, a chance per 40 minutes last season, just about on par, and he's on pace to create the same amount of chances he did with Villa last season as with Liverpool this year. The difference and the reason why he's got no assists racking up is because number one, Liverpool are just having trouble finding goals. Liverpool's chance conversion rate this season is 8.5%, where at Aston Villa last season it was 13%. Now you may think, oh, that 4 per 5 cent, that's nothing. Um, you know, what does that matter? Well, that's 15 goals right there that Liverpool missed out of. So if you give Liverpool that 13% conversion rate that uh, Stuart Downing had last year at Villa, Guaranteed, Stuart Downing has a couple assists up his belt, and Liverpool are up 15 goals. And I could probably say, if Liverpool had 15 more goals to add to their goal tally this year, they would be in fourth place. So do not blame Stuart Downing for the lack of his assists, um, which we all know is kind of a pointless stat because it relies on another person to convert. And um, frankly, Liverpool, their strikers, the whole team, has not converted anything this season. Um, so I bet you if Stuart Downing was on a team that is converting their chances, like, say, City... Um, he'd have a lot of assists this season. I'm not just saying that because City's a great team, but any team that has a higher conversion rate than Liverpool this season, Stuart Downing would um, be in much better eyes to those fans. So stop hating on Stuart Downing. Look at his stats. Um, I'll provide an article down beneath. I went to EPLindex.com and read their uh, little feature on Stuart Downing. If you read that, it explains everything. Keep the faith in him and um, just stop giving him shit when he doesn't deserve it. So that's all for today with JLB Sports TV. I'm Justin Block. I just want to come back, give you guys a nice long video so you guys are um, you know, satisfied for the time being. Good luck to Liverpool in the Carling Cup final tomorrow. I'll be watching with a bunch of other Liverpool fans. I want you to give me your predictions for the match and what starting 11 you would throw out there, not only for this Carling Cup final, but say if Liverpool were in a Champions League final in May. We all know they're not there, but if they were, what would be the starting 11 that you would throw out there? Formations, players down below, let me know about that or anything else you thought of my video. That's all for today, guys. YNWA.